Second in points, third in goals in the Western Hockey League, but from those born in 02, he's at the top of the list. And when it comes to Central Scouting's North American skater rankings, he is the top ranked forward from the Western Hockey League. Seth Jarvis is with us here as we get closer to the draft set. How did this season evolve to the point where you were so hot in what, the final 30, 30 games, basically? A lot of confidence came with it. I think uh, I stayed true to how I play and stuck the course. I think I started off a little bit slow, but uh, I kind of stayed doing the little details and it paid off in the end. Is there added pressure to know that your stock was rising and that you had to follow it up with those type of performances when you knew the scouts were watching? No, I think when my stock is rising, I just kind of want to keep riding that wave and riding that confidence. So I think when you see that, uh, it just feel, fuels you to just keep playing, keep playing good and keep, uh, keep the momentum kind of going. On, a chance for Jarvis. He's free behind the defense. Jarvis stopped by Lina. Portland behind the net, looking to backdoor feed it on a jam play. Far side. He's robbed. Third effort. He scores. Seth Jarvis will not be denied. A shorthand. The lead in half. 63 points in the final 26 games and obviously uh, then comes the disappointment from a team standpoint right of not being able to to continue that uh, as the the world hit pause what um, what were you hearing from your coaches you know you have you're playing for a pretty veteran coaching staff there as far as um, you know the hot streak you were on and the ways beyond the points that you were able to help lead this team? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of it was just being a leader off the ice. That's something I wanted to grow into and that's something that they saw uh, ability for me to do and get better in that way. And then it's, it was just always staying ready, always staying prepared for whatever's to kind of come. I think the, the pause kind of came out of nowhere and I think our team was heading in the right direction going into playoffs. But uh, yeah, you always preach just staying ready. Everybody says you've got amazing skills, but what's the part of your game that you think is undervalued, that you you believe in yourself, that you have something special, but nobody's really talking about? I think away from the puck. I think, uh, especially in the D zone, I think uh, I, have a, I have an ability to use my use my head and kind of use my stick and my uh, skating my skating skills just to kind of strip pucks and pull pucks away. I think I'm not a big physical guy, so I'm not going to be playing any big hits, but I think I'm, I'm able to kind of manipulate the, the forward into going into positions that make him uncomfortable or go to his backhand to be able to strip the puck from him and kind of take it the other way. And obviously we're amidst the longest off season in uh, hockey history for, for most teams that weren't in the NHL bubble. Um, how does one then work on the things that you really want to improve for that next season, wherever that season may be? Yeah, a lot of it for me was just staying in the gym. Uh, I want to get bigger, stronger, and. Uh, faster in all aspects. So staying in the gym was big for me. And I think being in Winnipeg, I was lucky enough to where everything opened up pretty early compared to other places. So I was able to get a little bit of a head start and get into the gym a little bit earlier. But uh, yeah, and then in terms of on the ice, the ice time started opening up around the same time. So I've been able to skate for a good chunk, a good solid probably four or five months. So wow. it's been nice to kind of work on everything and round out, round out all those little details. Well, Marty, you're going to show us that he doesn't have to round out certain areas. He's very gifted in many of those. So uh, why don't you take us through a few breakdowns right now? First play I've got is just you coming down the left side. You seem like you have a longer stick. I don't know if it's just the, the way the video is, but you really shoot that puck quickly. So tell us a little bit about your stick and the way you shoot the puck. Yeah, so my stick is a little bit longer. I like it more near my eyes. So I like it. Uh, I like it a little bit. A little bit longer just works. Uh, works better for kind of changing the angle on shots and have a little, little bit longer stick to pull pucks away. But yeah, I think uh, just coming down whenever you can kind of get a quick shot off, it's uh, it's good to have a little bit extra reach to really uh, change the angle on the goalie. Now O'Brien gives it for Jarvis, dancing around, shoots, he scores! Oh my goodness, the magician man! With a long stick, it's a lot harder, I believe, in tight space to be able to make plays. But this play here, you go like inside out, toe drag around the defenseman in tight space. Um, how hard do you work at the skill set to be able to move the puck like that? Yeah, I've worked really hard on my hands and getting getting good and tight. I think the game's getting faster, so you have less time, so you have to be able to make plays under sticks and around people. So I think on that play, just kind of putting it out to the side making him kind of bite for it and then just being able to pull it across my feet and kind of jump out the other end and then just having a nice clean shot on net. I think uh, it, it ended up working out good for me. And the last play is basically you coming down the right side and 
and deception in your shot. As you can see, the goalie is totally guessing blocker side and he slides to his right and you have the whole net to shoot at. So how about the deception in your shot and be able to work on that in practice, an element that's really, really important to the National Hockey League game. Yeah, when I was uh, 16, I was lucky enough to be under Cody Glass, who's probably the most deceptive passer I ever played with. No one ever knew where he was throwing the puck, so I just got to watch him for a whole year and see what he can do. And so I picked up little things like that, like using your eyes is big. I think just the goalie kind of looks at your stick and looks at your body position. So I think when you can kind of lead towards looking for the pass and then being able to change that angle and kind of put it back, uh, put it back short side, I think it, it worked on that plan. It's worked many times. Seth, it sounds like you're very self-motivated uh, when it when it comes to the skill development. Um, but this is also a time as you get close to the draft, um, you know, to acknowledge a lot of the people that have helped you along the way. Have you worked with anyone specifically from a skills standpoint that has got you this far? Yeah, skills standpoint uh, here in Winnipeg, I work with John Kara. He's kind of the head he had skills instructor at the rink, the place I train at. So uh, he's been huge for me. I've worked with him since I was probably 12 or 13 years old. So it's been it's been a long long time going. He's really he's really helped uh, improve my game and just put in little details, whether it's working with video and seeing seeing things I can work on or just uh, watching me watching me throughout the years, just continually improving. And Seth, last one for you. Uh, how big's your immediate family, and uh, what do you all plan to be doing on draft night, and where will that be? Yeah, I have a pretty decent sized immediate family, so I uh, hope all the grandparents, aunts, and uncles can kind of come over to my house and just uh, enjoy the moment with me, enjoy the day. And uh, yeah, just celebrate together and hopefully uh, hopefully have a good uh, rest of the night after it. Best of luck, uh, not only on draft night, but moving forward as well. Thank you very much.